Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Shanna. I have Mark here, and I think thanks for the introductions from Dave. Um, I think everyone may be ready to jump in the presentation and then demo today. Mark, are sure. you there? Yeah, I'm here. There. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Although okay. before you before you go any further, I think you really should tell people where you're coming from. Okay, sure. Uh, Mark, do you want to start first, and then I go next? It, it, so it's where we're coming from, not where we'd like to be coming from. <laughs> well, maybe if you're at home, where you'd like to be coming from. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, I'm up in Seattle, be, behind a big ho broken bridge, uh, but I'm I'm from the the, the northwest, um, craving warmer weather. <laughs> Um, I'm from SoCal, but today I'm in Joshua Tree. Uh, we're out here doing stargazing and hiking. <laughs> Something very not not very technical, but it's also fun. And we both work for Red Hat, and so uh, we're both in the cloud solution team. All right. So I get. I will. We'll start off with an agenda, just just so you kind of. What we're going to do uh, is kind of warm our, our ourselves up to Quarkus by by going through a brief brief history of of how we even got to Quarkus in the first place, both from a business perspective and a, a technical perspective. So we're going to tell that story, set that foundation, and then as we describe what Quarkus is and demo it, and then show you what's behind Quarkus. We're going to constantly tie back to those technical drivers and conditions um, to kind of wrap it all together to see why why Quarkus is a uh, a, a, a really good technology for um, for for cloud native applications. So that's that's the uh, kind of the format of it. So why don't we skip ahead? Sure. So Mark, why are we doing Quarkus? Maybe you can tell us the yeah, story. Yeah. So the the story uh, um, is is been going on for a while. Um, so so there's probably a, a fair amount of you that have a Java history. So you know it's been going on since um, somewhere in the '90s in a big way. And then as we evolved in in Java, it 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 came into the enterprise and it got bigger and had more services and became a larger framework. And that was J8. J2EE and Jakarta was just kind of a move over and a continuation. But you notice down here, and I'll explain this in a minute, uh, we, we call those monolithic architectures. They're, they're not necessarily bad, but uh, th there were needs for other architectures to address uh, business drivers. And so even that community and environment has evolved and came up with something called the micro profile to kind of deal with microservices and to begin to deal with cloud native. But what Quarkus really is, is a response to kind of take us to specific types of use case scenarios for Java developers and Java experience to do microservices in a much more lighter, more resilient way, uh, to do things that are called serverless, to do event-driven architectures. And we'll, we'll talk about all those um, items as we, as we work through the material. So why don't you jump to the, the first one. So here's almost, almost like a maturity model, um, but also a, a paradigm model. Really what I'm showing is that here on the, on the left, you know, we're focusing mostly to address the Java community. So um, just as I said before, J2EE or JEE or Jakarta, um, it, it has its characteristics uh, that have grown to um, basically have, let's just say uh, longer warm up times. And, and then the architecture as it matured for the enterprise was more monolithic in style, tightly bound, um, the ecosystem um, had a lot of services in it, but uh, the way we, we build programs in that area, we tightly bound all the modules together, and that, that can be good and bad. Um, 
in terms of business drivers, uh, sometimes the isolation isn't there. So if you change one thing in inventory, it somehow impacts the order system um, or the customer system. You change something, it, it impacts the catalog system. So on the, on the right-hand side, what I'm showing is the question whether you, you first start to ask if you want to go into something like a cloud Kubernetes environment, is it even cloudable? So, so that's kind of the framework here is to ask yourself the question, um, can, can you even do it? Um, and do you, and if you can, is it really a good idea? So once you go on to the next slide, so, so we'll go down the happy path and talk about monolithic to what I call the 12 factor um, app journey. And um, if you look at that, that might be more like a lift and shift, you know, but you might start to get some of the benefits of a, a Kubernetes environment um, where you can diversify and, and use the Kubernetes environment and, um, all the facilities around it to, to get a little bit more resiliency and availability in different ways, but you're still primarily waterfall in your, your, your tactics uh, or, your, or your activities and it's brittle. So if you keep moving to the right, um, or one more slide over, what you're looking at here is kind of a move to where we're getting to be cloud ready. So notice I've put the microservices profile in, so I'm, I'm optimized to speak with APIs and, and, and web services protocols. And, and that's down at the developer level, so they don't have to do all that, that work. And you'll see when we get into Quarkus, um, its architecture makes that really easy to do. But in that style of development, um, it, it's about independent logic in the modules. They're separated out now. Um, you have intent to, to build resilient modules or applications or microservices from the ground up. So it, it's, a, it's about moving in that direction. And of course, in any situation, there's all kinds of flavors and you might have a part cloud tolerant application, a part cloud ready. And then if we move on to cloud native on the next slide, what you're gonna see is now we start layering in um, other types of um, cloud native services for process automation and integration and run times. And, and we're getting to the point where um, all the different containers can scale up and scale down. We, we can service all types of server par paradigms or different types of usage paradigms, where they're, they're server-based or serverless, stateful or state low, stateless. Um, and you can start doing true CICD because, because of things like Quarkus, where, where the microservices are small enough and fast enough where it, it, it makes sense for the environment to, to do what you need to do. So that's really the, the story to go through this. Go ahead. So, so Shauna, once once you tell us a little bit about that, so that's leading up to why we're what Quarkus is, and and it will start to make sense as we keep going through the slides. Yeah. So, if Quarkus is new to you, Quarkus is an open source um, Kubernetes native Java framework using best of breed Java library and standards. So as a developer, we're using Quarkus, we feel like uh, we're using Java but because the goal of the Quarkus is to make Java a leading platform in the Kubernetes and serverless uh, environment. So it will also offer developers a lot of options and flexibilities to adjust uh, a wide range of distributed application architecture. Um, with Quarkus optimized the code for cloud native and 12 factor applications for microservices solution. And the, because it's just like Java, so the, the learning curve is very minimal and it's very easy for Java or Spring developers. Yeah, and down there at the bottom, yeah, it's, it's what you'll see is, and we'll talk about this a lot, but um, your your life and ease of working with things like micro profiles or um, hibernate um, 
it, it just gets easier and, and, and better through what's called the extension program. Yeah, Mark, I want to ask like, where, where do we normally use Quarkus? Um, like when we come to like, okay, I'm a Java developer, but what, what are the places where you want to use Quarkus? So, so from a, from an open community um, perspective, it, it's got a, a lot of flexibility and, and Red Hat is, is really on board with all that. So what we are doing with inside our environment is we're working closely with all the different community sectors. And we have Quarkus running um, either on Red Hat Linux um, included or in OpenShift, or if you're um, working in the application services, um, facilities and packages with inside OpenShift and um, RHEL, you can use it there and actually in some other environments. And the same goes with runtime. So we're what we're really trying to do is make it available for as many um, areas and locations and use, use cases as possible. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that more, but we, we plan to ex expand its presence in more and more use cases. But That's the message awesome. here is it runs everywhere. That's very cool. And so when we talk about the differentiator and benefits a little bit when we're using Quarkus and then we can move into more in-depth conversation or seeing it live. Okay. So how about I'll talk about container first and you talk about developer sure. joy. Yeah. So container first is really, really what happened. Um, so at the beginning of 2019, Red Hat and the community at large realized we had to do something to, to make Java truly cloud native. And a lot of the work that you're gonna see uh, in Quarkus is all about reducing the memory footprint and the fast startup times and smaller disk for, footprint. And, and, and the methods and techniques that we do to do that. And we did that from a business driver point of view is because we know as soon as we go out into the public cloud, uh, metering is everything. So, so all these things about application density and the time and the, um, the, the CPU that you're taking up, they all matter. Um, and they all cost money. So, so this is a way to mitigate those costs substantially when when you go to the cloud right and as for the developer joy one best thing one best features i like is the live coding um, and i will demo it and you will see how it looks like as a developer you can make ch continuously making changes on your code without restarting the process and recompile when you're using Quarkus. Um, and also you will also see there are lots a long list of uh, standard library and extension that you can get from uh, when you're using Quarkus. And so that will give you a lot of productivity back. On top of that, um, with the programming style that we offer, whether it's imperative or reactive, you can have both programming style in one application. So sometimes it's the flexibilities comes in and then we'll give you more productivities. Oh, that, that's perfect. So, so yeah. we'll talk about all these things in a little bit more depth. Yep. And when it comes to communities, we just talk about the extensions. It's like you will see the long list and we're gonna show. Uh, what about like comparing to Java, how are we ranking in the space and how yeah. does it you know, affect the performance and other stuff, Mark? So I, I think it really go, um, stems back to the fact that the, the Java community is, is one of the very large programming languages. It's, it's not all, and this is, not, not, this is just one of, min, one of a, a few other areas that, that Kubernetes and Red Hat and all vendors are trying to solve. But, but for this, this presentation, we're really trying to um, to make Java extremely viable for, for a cloud native environment. And, and that's why it, it really ties into that foundation of um, heritage developers and the experience that they have and the, the creativity along with the, the, the performance. 
Right, and then uh, with the two chain, actually, we have we have a web-based um, IDE, but we also provide uh, the plugin for many IDE to do Quarkus and um, cloud-native application. Uh, not only just the development mode, having the live coding, but also the integrations with um, the the into your life cycle, the developer life cycle. Uh, the software lifecycle for uh, CIC, like Jenkins and other integrations as well. And 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 there comes that 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 talk about the extensions again. So that's going to show up uh, in quite a few places. You're going to notice as we do the demo, and we're gonna we're gonna show you just how extensive that catalog is and how big that community is that that is that is basically building out those extensions to make sure you you have the same experience and 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 uh basically have access to all the innovation that's happening in open source okay so i guess do we want to kind of see how practice work uh, a little bit uh seeing the the logical flow and why it is uh, having the stunning performance that we are saying we, we do. Mark? Okay. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, that, uh, so basic, ba basically when you're doing uh, framework uh, where it start will be we, like Java, right? We're doing a bill, Maven bill, you will package it. And that's, you're done when you're doing that, you finish your build time. But at runtime, you're basically doing loading your configuration, like properties file and all your configurations. Then you were loading your classes in your class path, right? And then you're building out your metadata for your the object, right? On uh, for your application. Finally, you will then ready for your I/O and your threat pool, and then getting your request in. But all this step in your runtime, uh, it takes a long time. So this, this is where uh, it's a real business driver for companies because they have to they have to replace the rug for all the developers going back and forth to the coffee station. That's right. So because when you're doing your startup, it takes a while. Let's get a coffee. But now your coffee time might switch, right? Maybe go, going into your build time. Uh, the quickest the way is at the build time, we have get your configuration, um, load all the class, build your metadata. So you only do it once, not every single start time. And then at the bootstrap classes are no longer loading because it's all done in your build time. So less time to start, less memory used and less or no reflection uh, for, for the object to build because you have done everything in the build time. So when you do runtime, you just take whatever that already built object and then start it up. So you will see the startup is much faster uh, than your Java applications. That's cool, because then um, this, the, the, the time response time when you're doing like um, serverless application, you want the response time fast. And when you're building your code on top of oh, it- we have a we have a question. Oh, okay, what is the question? I don't, I can't see the question. Maybe you can. Oh yeah. So it, it basically says, could, could we explain how the Java runtime JVM gets containerized? Um, oh yes. yeah. So uh, we, we could probably save that for the growl mandrel section. What do you think? Or do yeah. Wanna... And I will actually demo that in the demo oh, two slides away. We're going to start the demo. So you can see how we build an application and containerize it in a manual way. And as well as using leveraging the extension and build it into a, a container at one shot. Is that good? Maybe a way for. A yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. Cause then we can, we can show them, explain it and then explain it after showing them. Yeah. So, yep. So hopefully that's okay with you. Um, and I would just want to mention that when we when we compile the code and assembly the code, you actually have have two options in the um, in Quarkus. You can build a JVM or you can build a native uh, image like executable wherever you're building your native image. 
because the compiler we're using Grow VM compiler is a dynamic just-in-time compiler written in Java. So it transforms your bytecode into machine code. Um, so Grow VM compiler actually can integrate with the Java hotspot VM and create the JVM for you. It's fast and small enough for you to run, but there is an other option called ahead of time compilation technology that it is an optimal way of building your native image. And so we call it super fast and crazy small, but you will see it why we call it, we, we, we label that. Um, it because that with that technology, we can actually build a code uh, natively, so uh, as if it's uh, executable on wherever you want to run it. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the conditions that might drive you towards um, building a traditional JVM versus building native. Yes, um, so I just I would just mention the crazy small. So this is just a comparison you can see. Mark, like, look at this, uh, 13 MB versus yeah. what you have, 140 MB. Uh, when you're building a different way, the transitional way versus the Grow VM using the Grow VM compiler. Yeah, it's nuts how much it streamlines, mm -hmm. you know, between the options. Yep, and then if you also take a look at the response time versus how we do the traditional cloud stack with JVM at Java and the regular way how you build it um, in Spring maybe. Uh, that's the huge um, advantage running such as serverless application. Yeah, because we're, we're wanna, actually going to see see that in the yeah. demo too. Yeah, you 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 scale it down, and when you don't want it because you don't want to use up the resources, but you want to scale it up fast enough so that it will serve the request in a in a good quality way, right, for your end user. So right. this is a, a great way to um, improve your application. So I know. Um, Demo, I'm gonna do a live demo. And so hopefully we'll answer some of you guys' questions. Please put so, in your so questions. If you, if you look up at the top, essentially what, what she has on her machine and I have on my machine is uh, the, the right facilities and she's gonna um, work locally first in yeah. like uh, steps one through three. The blue and person then, without like hair one. is me uh, now. Um, <laughs> So what are you going to see uh, is it, just how you build, take a look at the dev mode, uh, how to build a native executable, and how we're going to take the application and make it as a containerized uh, image, and then push it to the you know, Kubernetes platform. So uh, let's get started. So I, I just installed a job, uh, open JDK, uh, Grow VM on my local laptop. I install uh, a library for the image, uh, native image build. And then, um, and then that's about it. Like, you know, and Maven, I, I uh, upgrade my Maven after I install my Big Sur. So basically the starting, you can just start with um, a Maven, building a Maven project using the Crocus plugin. So this is the command I use uh, uh, using 1.13 to a Maven plugin, just creating my um, a sample app. And then I do that so I, I can talk and I can type at the same time and I right. won't mess up. <laughs> and so quickly you will get that, um, you see that uh, quick start. And then, um, and the next step, um, and no, will, no, notice she put some extensions in for um, Spring Web because she was trying to illustrate uh, yeah. that, that that we can, all those extensions, this is just one of hundreds. But uh, if you're a Spring developer and you're used to doing things the, the Spring way, then you, you don't have to change much. Yeah, and then so the second step, I'll just uh, because I want to build it, and then I will do my add my extension into the project, and then I will want to show you the prompt XML. So I automate a command line so I can talk while the you know. The and and, and now up. we're in 
what are we in visual we are studio? in now yeah visual studio um i use that as an ide um and you can actually see uh, the dependencies is configured it for me right and um wow. uh, when i build my maven project you can do that come as a as click around and and do that on maven but it just for demo it's easy just run the command and have Perfect. everything created this is and, what 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 makes it uh Quarkus spring spring boot aware yeah so you can see it feel like hello spring as a sample right and then if i go back um i think i'm at number three step right so i'm gonna run it def mode and this is the command i i run to um, start my um application with def mode and when it when i do that um I will go, uh, let's see if uh, it's finished, it's coming up. So uh, my Crocus is up um, and uh, it's not using the native. You can see it's using 2.779 seconds to start uh, with the death mode with a little longer, but my application is actually up and running. Yeah, so that's see. where you just changed it, right? So you can just go back and forth and change it immediately yeah. and so um, I'm you get instant results. Yeah, I'm going to do a simple example, the live coding, uh, and and then you can see. Now I I um I have the uh, code changed it, and I didn't have to recompile. I didn't have to restart my process, and I just want to see my code has changed. Voila, there you go. So, I mean, uh, this is the one of the best thing in the uh, live coding. You can make changes as it comes and it will load the changes for you. You don't have to wait for the recompile. You don't have to wait for the uh, re, uh, restarting your process. How about that? Anyone like that? Yeah, any, any, any questions so far? Any, like... Uh... <laughs> And so also, I want to mention that in uh, Crocus out the out the box, uh, when you're doing live def, def mode, uh, you can live uh, make changes in the uh, configuration. A lot of times, like oh, well, I'm starting the new framework, I don't really know what the properties. I here you go, they list it out all for you. Um, and then it's uh, it's kind of continuously we improving. You will see the bean. You will see your innovation tree and all that information um, from the uh, Dev UI that is part of the uh, Dev Mo uh, fun functionality features. That's pretty yeah, cool, right? Yeah, and that's 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 brand brand new. Okay, and I, I'm gonna touch on the question. If pop the questions, I'm gonna run through my demo. And then we can um, have some questions to uh, answer, uh, right? Um, I was, I think I'm on number four. I want to build a native bill, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start it off because it takes some time when we do a native bill. So what it is, is um, I can let it build and then I can explain a little bit. Um, and So I'm going to go back to my. Uh, yeah. So what? So what's happening here? Yeah. And so, so what I just did was uh, issue the command to build a native image, which telling the um, um, the the compiler I want to build this application in a local executable. Okay. So what it does is it will, you can see the build information, it builds the application and it try to um, create uh, the bill. And actually this bill will take a little longer because um, it is a closed loop uh, um, assumption and it will build all the objects and, um, and, and it will then you'll be able to use that much yeah, so, smaller so this memory. Is just like right. that chart chart you showed where you know the first time it's a little bit slower because we're doing it all up front um through aot but yeah uh, it, it won't but we'll see just how fast it is once it's done yeah we so, start it up again uh as um as a preparation i actually you know how people do the cooking show in the like in the hgtv or cooking <laughs> channel yeah. 
and you know, yeah, I like those channels too. And so I, I uh, took that my previous bill, but unfortunately we only have a live bill, so which is good. Uh, I, I prepare just in case it takes longer before I finish yep. talk after I finish talking. So um, actually, if I go to, uh, if I if I just run the uh, under the tie get, I have that application or the bill brand. Yeah, deal. so th this is where the package resides, right? Mm. Yeah, you, you grabbed it. You can see the start time is 0 0.021 second when wow. we're doing the native. And um, and and well, that little window was just my big serve um, of getting uh, a request. I just have to let because it's new executable. Uh, once you have let the security on the OS, it will. Yeah. And, and there are all those extensions showing up right there. Yeah, you can yeah. see the features is yeah. uh, part being part of it. Um, and this is a um, native executable. Uh, I'm building it on um, my Mac OS. Uh, you will build it on anywhere you, you like, um, Linux and Windows and Mac OS, I think. Any questions? Yeah, so once, once, we, once, once this is done, we can pick this up and pretty much put it anywhere. Yeah, so once you do that, we want to containerize it. I remember someone's asking. So I'm, oh, gonna, run, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna run that application because it, you know, it takes some time and I'll go to the other window I can explain. And then we can look at the bill that way. Okay. Uh, we can save some time and then you guys can um, uh, be done on time, hopefully. Uh, so I am, let me see where I am. I need to get back to that. Uh, directory right so i actually can show you my my container so what happened is i just ran something quick uh, it's not that i want to hide anything i just want to get started to build right. um so i using an extension telling it as a container image docker extension i want to build this um, application into a container and i want to build native right dash p native and i will using native container build equal to true. And so when you see it, um, you will actually see building in my local uh, Docker registry. I'll, sh I'll show in a minute. Um, and uh, it will, I will tell it, I want to build the runtime Docker. And this is, those are the parameters when I run my uh, Maven build to, to, to have the build up here. I'm gonna smooth it down. And so what happened is, we, well, I, I assume everyone have done a little bit of Docker, um, that's my assumption. So if you haven't, uh, so normally a, do, a Docker build related to a Docker file where you will have your base image, right? And then you will add your layer of your framework, then your application, then you want to run the command, something like that, right? With the Quarkus, it knows, so I'm gonna scroll up, you will see. Um, when I start the process and it will know, um, it builds the jar, right? Then mm -hmm. it knows that it pulls the uh, Quarkus UBI's image. Um, UBI image is just universal base image that provided by Red Hat that you can take this image and use it anywhere. It doesn't tie to any subscription um, so, so, it can so, be so, used in the so, community. so any o OCI compliant Kubernetes framework or? Yep. And then, yeah, definitely uh, OCI compliant, um, the open uh, container initiative uh, uh, compliance, which uh, you will then be able to run any uh, standard Kubernetes platform because uh, with OCI compliant containers, then you can have, you can do that. Um, not only pulling the Crocus um, um, uh, framework, right? And also uh, behind the scene, we're using Java Open, uh, open JDK 11. Uh, so it knows uh, where to pull the stuff for the Crocus framework. Um, and and from the, from, for this case, it tied to the Cray um, um, to pull that, the that, That's the registry that we're, we're using. So it, you can easily pick it up and reproduce it really quickly and fast, right? Yeah, so because it's building the native, so it will have to do the same thing, but let me show you my local um, Docker, I'm gonna scroll it up. 
And so I deal one was 21 um, hours ago, uh, but when it's completed, then um, you will be you will be seeing a, a new um, image is built and, and is available in my local registry. Right, right. Did I answer that questions about building container? Uh, I don't know, can you confirm? I can't see, let me see the chat. Yeah, um, so uh, anybody out there, that's part of the answer. We're, we were gonna come at it from a um, structural and architectural uh, angle oh, after the demo as well. Dan is asking that, of course. Uh, I know Dan, hi Dan. Uh, so hopefully that answer your question, how we are uh, building the container. And then uh, this is one way of doing it. And then I'm gonna show you the second way of doing it. Um, and uh, because uh, this bill might take a little longer uh, because we're doing the native bill, but I can actually uh, start up a, um, using my old image, right? I build this one. I can actually take this one up and then we can see that uh, build in a minute. So hopefully that no one have to like watching the paint dry, right? Looking at the screen, right? Let's see if I can move this uh, box around. Okay, so basically if I, um, I have the, so once you build your image, you actually uh, want to do local testing, right? So maybe you want to uh, start up the build. Oh, okay, well, we're here. You see, if you're familiar with the Docker uh, build, is we actually never have to create a Docker file because it does it for you, okay? It's doing the Docker build for you and with the, the, the Docker file already made for you to create a Quarkus containerized application. Okay, and because it's being built, so I don't have to do my kitchen uh, cooked chicken, showing my cooked chicken. I can actually show you a live chicken um, that I just built 32 seconds ago, right? So um, if I, so I'm a developer, I build my image, I want to test it locally, I will just do this. Um, so you see that it's, it started at 45 seconds. This is a uh, native image. Uh, this is my container. Um, I forwarded the port here. So let's test this guy. Um, and see, he is my um, containerized application running in the container on my local machines. So next, how do we make this container and push it to the contain, uh, container platform, right? That's what we want to do. So um, I, I will have to do the normal mechanics, right? You tag your image, push it to some uh, uh, enterprise repository, uh, image repository, that's what I'm doing. Um, and then I will then be able to deploy onto my Kubernetes platform. In my case, I'm using OpenShift. Um, you can pull your image and run on any Kubernetes platform uh, once your image is being built. And, but if you're building a local um, environment, uh, you, you want to build something that is compatible where you run, and that's about it, right? Um, so I, I just want um, that, right, to, to actually um, doing this login, then I'll tag my uh, image and then push to my repository. That's what I did. And then I want to push to my Kubernetes platform. Um, I build my namespace and then I just say, hey, this is my image. I want to deploy it. Uh, this is something OpenShift can do. And then drop the image and run it for me. And then if I do a kubectl uh, get pods, um, and my pod is running, uh, that's awesome. That's so quick, right? And notice I'm running my Kubernetes platform on AWS. And so if I go here, I'm gonna put this on chat and then maybe you guys can do some live testing for me. Um, I am going to put my, so this is my container that I just built on my local 
and push it onto my container platform and running here. And you all can hit there um, because it's a public URL. How cool is that? I don't know, I, you guys tell me. I, I thought that's pretty seamless, but if you think about it, uh, when I finished my de development, uh, local testing, I just want something that I can run a much more seamless, uh, easy, more efficient command to get my container ready for testing because I finished my local development. How do I do that? And so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm i gonna walk you through this, right? So first I'm building this application. So I'm gonna show you what it is. Um, so basically I just run a Create Maven uh, project that I tell it not just using the Spring Web um, as an extension, I use OpenShift extension. Um, and so it will, at the corporate extension for me. And not just that, I will use, um, once I do that, um, I will get to my project called SD DevOps Focus. And then I will add my extension just like I do any bill, right, locally. Then I will um, be able to run this command and I'm gonna walk you through the command. Um, Sorry, the problem with doing two screen um, is I have to remember where I am, what I did, right? So now I want to take the application that I built and push it to the container platform. Let's say I have all the code that I need, right? I pull it from the, um, uh, your, your Git repo or somewhere. And then I can just run this. So let's look at what I did there, right? While it's running, uh, it's not fun to watch the paint dry. So this is the command I did. I did a clean package and just like how I do Maven build, right? But I tell it, I want to build this container build um, using um, the client assert and you know those are necessary parameters. Importantly, I was telling Quarkus Kubernetes deployment target on OpenShift. And then I also want to expose that uh, URL that I gave you as an access for testing, right? So with this command, I can build a container, build my application, create a container with my application, uh, push it to the, reg uh, the, the Kubernetes platform uh, registry, spin it up as a um, container application running on my Kubernetes platform. Mm -hmm. So I did all that with one single command. Um, I did all that with one single command. Uh, so as you can see, now I can walk you through um, the process of it. Let me see. So this is the, uh, the, the, the jar, the building the jar, right? And then now you can see um, it's building what the image stream, knowing you get the open JDK, getting the Quarkus image, uh, create my build configuration for the build. Everything is not here, it's not building on my local, it's building on my container platform already. So generate the uh, Docker file for the build. You see this Docker file step going through, right? And then, um, and, and we'll be soon when it's done, what it is is we'll, you will uh, have that application available. Let's see it, right? Oh, um, yeah, so it's, cuddle, it's made it through. Coop cuddle, uh, if I can spell. And so my new part actually called uh, S3 Depth Up, right? C uh, getting the container create uh -huh. uh, is coming up. Normally it's faster than it is. So when it's, uh, when it's come up, then you will be able to, uh, and I say, actually, I want to get the route, right? The, the ingress uh, object that's being created right. as well. So the ingress objects is being created. Um, so I want to know who actually hit my URL before. Did I get, get a hand? Let me see, no reply. I hope you guys test it for me. Um, and so here, the part is already running. This is my new application, right? Uh -huh. 
And because remember we we create a brand new app, so it should have this hello spring instead. Um, I didn't copy it. Let me grab it again. Sorry about that. And see here with that one command, I was able to do everything and deploy my application onto a container platform. Is that cool? I don't know. You guys tell me. <laughs> I thought it was cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. All right. Any any question? Anyone has any questions? So is this the right URL? Uh, yes, uh, because this is the um, this is one of that what they call a route uh, and exposed by uh, OpenShift that will actually resolve to the endpoint where your application is. It's one of the features in OpenShift, but if you using Kubernetes, you will uh, need to create a ingress object, right? So then it will take care of the ingress and your ingress will probably, um, you will have an ingress controller and then you will, depends how you create your ingress controller, uh, whether it's using load balancer for your service or a, um, a, uh, a static IP address, uh, that's your choice, right? But with OpenShift, creating a route will take care of everything for you. So that was uh, make it simple. And so uh, the, the uh, URL doesn't work for you. Yeah, did we, did we see some of the startup times? Yeah, can you try one more time? Or did you put a... Um, So I just, um, here, I just put it here and then you hit enter, you don't get anything. Is it, um, do you actually get blocked by your firewall in your, because the URL doesn't look normal? No, no, mine's, mine's working. Yeah, anyone try it, Dave? Oh, Dave tried it. Maybe I'll help you, Dave, uh, the check your, Hey, uh, I see you, John. John, did you were you able to hit the URL? I see John is there. Maybe Tony. Okay. I think it's some of the internet. Oh, now we're working. Oh, yeah. So, uh, well, maybe uh, my my browser default. Maybe for you, you need to type it. Um, Sorry for that. Uh, so that's all I have. And uh, let's take a look. The takeaway, we gave you a developer experience. Uh, we actually can call Quarkus anywhere. And we see two ways of building um, the Kubernetes uh, uh, application, the cloud, cloud native application and deploy on the Kubernetes platform. Um, and uh, you can see the whole process of deploying it. Uh, so that's all I have for the live demo. And I also mentioned one of the developer joy is that we can do imperative and reactive. I, we didn't have time for that, but this is like a code that I give you a little taste of it. But I know that Mark have more story around this. Mark, take it away. Sure. Yeah. So so what, what we wanted to do is kind of illustrate um, some of the things that Quarkus could do with kind of a, uh, a story I ran into to, to illustrate it. So if you just click on that little story uh, box there, we'll, yeah, we'll just go to- Just a reminder yeah. of time is five o'clock, Mark. So okay. we'll probably let you speed it up a little bit. All right, I'll speed it up. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I met a actual forester in- uh, in Borneo, who was doing this type of work on the top, and before they modernized their systems, they 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 really kind of had everything stop inside a uh, a, a drop yard, kind of like queues. Um, they had to do all their sorting um, there. Then they had to bring it in. They had to um, tightly um, work that logic with each particular mill. But then what, what he did is he was able to get some of it to work almost like a reactive um, style of programming where he was able to bring the trucks in. And then as they dropped off, uh, the sorter work was, was worked over into the actual mills. And so what I'm kind of showing there is something that they call a, a handler, you know, in, in that type of framework. 
And then the reactive logic was it was right on the edge at, at the mills. And then that allowed them to, to change, basically handle all, all sizes of wood for hardwood. But anyway, that, that was a way they modernized it. So if you go back to the, uh, the chart, really what we're saying here is you can do both. And, and just like that example, you could be halfway through your, your developing paradigm and you don't have to re, you know, you don't have to scrap everything you, you've done. So that's one of the great things about the architecture that we'll talk about here is you can do reactive imperative or you can do both. Um, and you can do it partway through the life cycle of your, your application solutions um, instead of having to start all over. Yeah, the point is the flexibility provide more um, productivities. As same yep. as this thing, uh, this slice is takeaway is that there will be a lot, um, you will have an army of extension to help you to be productive when yeah. you're using Crocus. So, so don't be an army, have an army. So, so Vertex right. was what we were actually alluding to with the uh, reactive capability. Yeah, when you go back to the code that uh, .io, you will see the extension. For the interest of time, I'm gonna moving forward. I know uh, we targeting the time to it. Yep. But, um, and and there are, uh, we also provide a slide deck as well. Uh, the Crocus architecture is uh, just, uh, kind of a high level showing you the components where it is and comparing to how we do Crocus versus uh, maybe Java, right? And the last two boxes basically is um, uh, the options that we talk about when we- Yeah, and, and then the, 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 the question kind of was up was, how, how do we really do this? And it's it's right there at the bottom. So it's gonna shift into kind of the, the discussion around Growl and Mendrel. Um, but it's it's that that technology that's plugged in with uh, Quarkus that allows us to to basically get the 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 runtimes fast and small. Yep. Um, so when it comes to the compiler, we talked about uh, Grow VM and it is a open source project. And um, Mark, you want to kind of talk about the upstream sure. and the downstream differences? Yeah. So, so before we jump into the bigger slides, the one on the left is the the upstream um, it, the with left, the sorry. community and Oracle really bringing that out for all of us. And then, um, kind of on the right is what we call the downstream and. And then if you click on either one of those, you can see um, that that the Growl VM architecture is really polygot in nature. So it can do more than Java. Um, and that Truffle compiler allows that to happen. But then when you switch over to Mandrel, wh what we've really done is just fine tuned it, optimized it so that we can get the absolute most out of the Java, Java container. Just click that, yeah. All right. Yeah, and and so that that's kind of the, how the magic happens um, with with uh, Quarkus. Yep. And so when you think about GraalVM specific benefit, uh, A is uh, all upstream, um, and so is 100% open source. You get all the innovations together and, and making things better, and we all driving for optimization uh, things like the. Um, the native image, uh, which is a closed world optimizations that we do um, when we building the native image. Um, and so I will then minimize all the dependencies and help to eliminating the deck code. Uh, when it comes to trade-off and consideration, Mark, I know you have a very good perspective on this one. I want you to talk about that. Okay. So, so really, if you think back to the beginning of the, the sections and we were talking about intent. Well, the intent for, so, so some of the things that happen when you go uh, you, you use the native container is things like dynamic close, um, class loading and uh, invoking dynamic methods and handlings and some of the other features, uh, they don't really apply anymore. And it's, it's a lot because of the intent to make this a microservices architecture and, and make the uh, containers immutable. And then same with security, it, 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 it applies, but it applies in a larger, much larger framework around the, the, the Kubernetes 
environment itself and securing that through common utilities, um, talking to the, the, the worker nodes and, and the application code with inside that system. So, so those things, you know, it, it, it's a trade-off, but it, it's also an, an intent of, of what we're trying to do is to be truly cloud native. And then you can use some of the other um, uh, facilities um, in, in, in specific context, probably not enough time to go into that now, but, but you, you can, especially for the J, open JDK portion. And when I'm a developer and I wanna use Quarkus, uh, but which VM that I should pay? Because there are two. Yeah, so so the native one is you know when you have high density requirements, you, you want things to stand up, shut down really fast. Um, you want to go serverless. Um, your your CPU usage is not highly intensive. The life life cycle of of the request is is really short. You know, on the Open JDK hotspot, you're going to have more much more memory intensive requirements a little bit more longer running. So that CPU, you're gonna need more CPU. Um, you're gonna need um, you know, control over your heap size usage. Um, some of the other things you might want to use the traditional monitoring tools. And so in the life cycle, um, if you're doing cloud native, you, you may still use those in part of the life cycle, but if your intent is, is to tr truly you know, get, get towards cloud, um, 12 factor types principles, then then it will be more on the right. Thank you. Okay, well, but we have a lot of Spring Boot developers. We're thinking uh, Quarkus is actually the next step for Spring Boot. Mark, what do you think what about this? Yeah, and there, there were a couple of questions in the chat, so I'm going to have to look up a couple of them, but I was actually looking to, this morning on our, our portal of all the uh, the the parts of Spring Boot that that we support inside the system, and it's a it's about eighty percent of the common use cases that we support. Um, specifically, I um, I'll find out that question, but but the the main message here here is is Spring Boot is great stuff, and it it took us you know kind of the next level um, to get things smaller and easier to use, and all that we do is we view Quarkus as to make it even easier to use, but use the extension architecture to still apply the best of Spring Boot and then continue to get even more lightweight and moving faster and truly cloud native. So you notice I pulled those, those kind of uh, maturity model icons over in the left where we, you know, we think in general, Spring Boot could could be cloud native in some instances, but in more instances, probably cloud ready. And then like other paradigms, um, EAP or Oracle or any of those things, as we move them into uh, Kubernetes environment, um, they first might be just cloud tolerant, but our ultimate goal is to really make things cloud native in all the principles that are described um, in that life cycle and chart in, in the architectural and uh, capability principles of those. Thank you, Mark. I think that is well said. Um, and last but not least, uh, we want to kind of summarize the use cases for the audience um, for the Quarkus use cases here. Um, do you want to go do that, Mark? Or do we want to sure. go? OK. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll probably, have, we're running out of time, so we'll move yeah. pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Probably the, the 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 two common ones are three common ones are on the top. Actually, all of them are. It, it's changing back and forth, but mm -hmm. Greenfield was really the first. Mono to microservices was was another area, um, but they all have those characteristics of you know agile and a twelve factor at um, um, type applications. And then IoT is is a little bit newer, um, so that's why we mentioned. You know, Rail is now supported with, with, uh, with our framework and Quarkus on it, and and that really comes down to the whole discussion of serverless. You know, where function as a service, where serverless is really just, um, you know, a, 
a, a, a piece of code that just starts up really fast and you could just have one function in it and it would act exactly like a function as a service. Um, it's just, you'll see it because we, we expose everything in the way that we, we, we put our technology out. And then, you know, we talked a little bit about reactive and, and again, we talked a little bit about Spr spring boot and kind of taking it to the next generation. So all these um, use cases actually taking advantage of Crocus being be able to right. be running small NFS startup time um, to make this uh, a use case more uh, applicable. And I, I want to leave some of the customer feedback. Uh, we're going to share the slide deck. I, I think it's OK. Just uh, maybe you guys can uh, check it out. And so uh, the, the productivity, the response time we're getting from the customer, and uh, some of the good feedback uh, when they're switching to progress. Um, also, last uh, two more things that we want to talk about is the uh, we will leave the link for the ID report for the Quarkus study. If you want to get your hands wet, uh, there is a tutorial that you can uh, check it out. And then if you want to start coding, uh, code.quarkus.io is the best place for you to start. Um, just to kind of show uh, the, the extension that we talked about. And here is the like crazy long list of extension you can get to. Last but not least, I know you guys have questions. Um, I want to share that with you. Uh, the summit is coming uh, we, in two weeks, um, and it's free. Anyone can register to talk to our customer, our expert, learn about different new technology, um, and uh, what, see how other people, the story goes in their cloud story, um, you know, and games and entertainment, and, it, it, um, and it's a good, fun, uh, educational event. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, you can sign up from that link. Uh, you can also come back in June and there's more deep dive and learning. Um, I want to leave this with ending the, uh, the presentation today because that, that you will get a lot more just compared to what you're getting today. Yeah. Mark, anything you want to add to it? I, I'm going to check on yeah, the so questions. Yeah, there, so there's a question about um, at, at blocking annotations. You know, I, I think the maybe the best way to describe that is uh, is through vert.x and it, its facilities. Um, I, I did want to mention it's not up here. I, I wish I'd put it up here. I just found out yesterday, but we're going to be putting on an event-driven architecture where where I'm going to I'll actually answer that that whole thing and get get a little bit more familiar with the vert.x and 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 how it does the the the, the blocking and non-blocking types of facilities in it okay i see one uh q a but i can't see the question that is that that's the only question? yeah yeah that okay. was that was the last question okay any um dave uh, yeah. How are we doing on time? And uh, do you have any other questions? I think we just got another question. Uh, there's one. Did you guys answer the one from Ashish about? I think you did that one. Yeah, I answered a couple of them while I was online. And then so, there was another one about from Charles Leon. It, okay. He's asking about if there's another meetup talk. Did you guys answer that one? Uh, no, I didn't see that question. What? Um, uh, maybe Mark you see it. He says, is there another meetup or could some talk about more advanced paradigms in Quarkus, like using mutiny, reactive programming, uh, yeah, etc.? Well, it, it's interesting that you said said that because Dev Nation just did a talk on that about a week or two ago. Um, I can find the I can find the link to that. There's actually a recording on it. Um, yeah, if there is, if there is, post a recording to the meetup comments. Okay. okay. Yes, we'll do. All right. Hope you guys enjoy the demo and the presentation today. Uh, by the um, way, there was one other question. I don't know if you answered it. It was about uh, can you explain blocking annotation? We did answer that one. I yeah. You know. so, okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, th there was another one that just came in. So so right. yeah. Quarkus is uh, once it's in the Kubernetes framework, um, it, it automatically has access to CICD through Tektron, and it also has an operator that can go out 
to, to, to Jake and so you can get access um, either way, depending on the kind of flavor that you like. And then you, you could add others as well. We just have made it very easy for both of those. Okay, I think that is the last of the questions. Um, nice little flurry at the end there. And it actually is very nice that uh, almost everyone stayed the whole time. So uh, good content. Um, thank you very much for that. So you know, with that, I think, uh, Shannon, Mark, I think we should wrap it up. Um, so let's give you a round of applause, a little virtual round of applause. Thank you very much. Yay. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I guess nobody else can clap but me. Here you go. Yay. All right. Cool. All right. So thank you very much for that. And uh, again, thanks everyone for coming uh, to Silicon, Silicon Valley DevOps Meetup. And uh, we will make sure that any information is posted. I will also send out an email to all of you who registered to the email that you use to register for Zoom to invite you to, get, to uh, choose your $10 gift card. And uh, I think that without See, I think that's about it. So thank you everyone for coming. I'm going to turn off the recording now and I will be posting this video online and sending out a link to you uh, all so that you can review it again. And here we go. We'll stop that recording.